Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and in this video we're going to continue on with our How to Write Queries Correctly series. And uh, in this one I'm going to tell you, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know, literally everything you need to know about common table expressions for free. Uh, if anyone ever s tries to convince you that they have something uh, worth selling you for you to learn about common table expressions, laugh in their face throw something heavy at them. This is it. This is all you need to know about common table expressions. All right. So before we do that, uh, if, if you if you would like if you would like to spend four dollars a month on this channel, you can. Uh, there's a link in the video description where you can click that says become a member and then you become a member and I get four. Well, I get three dollars and ten cents a month after taxes. Uh, if you if you are just no, no way four bucks. Uh, you can like, you can comment, you can subscribe, all very valid ways to show uh, your, your undying love for me. Um, consulting, I do it, a lot of it, uh, and, I, and I, apparently, according to my wife, I need to do more of it because it keeps me in my office. Uh, so you want to make my wife happy, you can hire me to do uh, any one of these things and more with your SQL server or servers. Uh, and as always, my rates are reasonable. Uh, if you would like to uh, get some very high quality, very low cost SQL Server training, none of it about common table expressions. Uh, uh, that at least you know, not not in a not in a very elementary way, because I would I would never charge you for that. I save the good stuff for training. Uh, you can get all of mine for 150 US dollars uh, for the, for the, for the rest of your life. It's not quite free, but if you live a long time, it's close to it. Uh, there is also a link for, for that stuff in the video description. Um, you know, 2025, I'll be on the road again for now. Give me a break. So with that out of the way, let's, let's talk about the, the laughability of common table expressions. So uh, <clears throat> one, uh, they're just inline views, and you need them for some types of queries. Uh, unlike derived tables, you can reference them multiple times in a query, but this is where they start to cause problems. Uh, you can write modifications against them, which is mostly useful for doing ordered deletes. Um, the, for some reason, you can't put a top or with an order by and a delete. It's very strange. Uh, sorry, a delete with an order by and a, and a with a top with a delete and an order by. It's it's weird. Um, you can write recursive ones, but it's really annoying. And if you find yourself having to write recursive common table expressions a lot, uh, you should probably consider a different data model. Um, you, you can often do things a lot more cleanly with apply than you can with common table expressions. Common table expressions require you to stack things one above the other and keep doing things. With apply, you can just have a nice neat query where you just have stuff very nice and streamlined and inlined uh, without having multiple steps that someone has to read through and remember the column names and the common table expression names. It's all very aggravating. So um, like I said, uh, the, the, the big gap that uh, common table expressions were meant to fill in in SQL Server is uh, with derived tables, you, you might notice some red squiggles here. That's because we can't, we can't talk to the derived expression X uh, more than once, right? We, we, just, we just can't do that. Um, it, it just doesn't work for us, uh, even, if I, even if I name that correctly. <laughs> uh, there we go. Uh, even if I name that correctly, we still get red squiggles. And if I try to run this, it'll say invalid object name, x1, who are you? I don't know. Uh, but we can do that with common table expressions. The problem, as always, with common table expressions is every time you re-reference them, SQL Server runs the query in them again. Uh, if you look at this, we, not, we, we, we touch the user's table not once, but twice. And if we quote this in and we add a third join to our correctly named uh, common table expression, we will now see that we touch the user's table three times, a one, a two, a three. So uh, like, like I said, the thing that like SQL, Microsoft was like, cool, we have common table expressions now. Now you can reference them multiple times. No way to materialize them. Other database engines give you that. Microsoft, as of this recording, does not. Maybe that's a secret thing in SQL Server 2025. I don't know. Uh, couldn't tell you. Um, I don't know how much work goes into common table expressions. Microsoft is clearly busy with very important things involving fabric and AI that uh, will, will go absolutely nowhere. So we have that to look forward to. Thanks. 
Um, so this is what I was talking about with deletes. Uh, you cannot uh, do this, right? You can't have that in there, but we can have that in here. Right? If we add an order by u.id, um, this is completely valid where this is not, right? This will say, <coughs> eh, no, no ordering, no ordering for you. Uh, this thing though, uh, this will give us a nice ordered delete and we don't have to worry about anything in there. Uh, there's no sort in this because I'm ordering by the ID column. Um, I, don't, I, think, I think when I was t messing with this before, I, may, I think I, I deleted the order by by accident. But if we were to order by a column that is not supported by an index, you would see it gets sorted there. Uh, when we use ID, that is the clustered primary key of the users table. So it's already ordered for us. So we can delete things nice and orderly this way. Um, sometimes uh, you need a common table expression. You could also do this with a derived table. Um, my style guide says, uh, it doesn't matter because for, this, for a query this simple, it's just not that big of a deal, right? Uh, you generate a row number and you want to filter out to where that row number equals something. There's no way in SQL Server to do that all in one step, right? You can't, you can't do that all in, one, all in one go for some reason. SQL Ser Microsoft makes you write a two-step query and generate everything. And then at the very end of that query, filter out everything in there, right? So uh, that's a lot of fun, right? Sometimes, sometimes you need to use them because Microsoft won't implement useful things that make your life easier. You get big data clusters, uh, Synapse, <laughs> managed instance. <laughs> Why would anyone want these things? They're garbage, stupid things. Uh, and of course you can write recursive common table expressions with uh, uh, using common table expressions of course, you couldn't write a recursive common table expression without a common table expression because there's, there, there's, no, there's no just plain recursive. You, you, you need that. But uh, you know, you, 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 I, I did go a little bit more into performance details on this in the, other, in the other video in this series about common table expressions, which you can find if you look at the playlist. It's all in there. But you start off with this part. <clears throat> And this is where you, you write the anchor portion of your common table expression. And this is where you write the recursive portion of your common table expression. And if you run this query, well, actually, let's look at the query plan. I forget, I don't think I have indexes that make this good. So this would run for a long time. One of the big problems with common table expressions is that, uh, re recursive common table expressions, rather, is that the recursive part of the query is forced to run single threaded. Uh, and it can be very, very slow if you don't have good indexes in place to support it. And another thing is that usually you're going to see a lot of nested loops inside of your recursive common table expression. And if you don't have good indexes, you're going to see eager index spools inside of here. And that is a surefire sign that they are going to be terribly, terribly slow. So not a lot to say about the recursive common table expression. Again, if this is something you need to do frequently, you probably need a better data model. Now, uh, for anyone who says they make queries more readable, again, for like the 10 billionth time, they don't. They don't make them more readable. They don't make them more understandable. What makes, them, what makes queries readable is good formatting, and what makes queries understandable is good commenting. Writing a common table expression does absolutely nothing to make a query either one of those things. It does not help. There is still no explanation for what you did. There is still just wild formatting where you, for some reason, it's like select and then like columns and then from is on the same line and then join is on the same line, but on is down here and like just format your queries and, and people will find them readable and, 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 and co make comments on your queries and people will find them understandable. It's a fantastic thing. It's a wonderful thing to do. Otherwise, you're just writing gobbledygook. So one thing that uh, some people will do with common table expressions is th stuff that they could do with apply very easily. Like let's say uh, this is something that uh, Itzik talks about uh, sometimes in his training is that like just people who want to do simple things like just get the year from uh, from uh, from a date or date time from a date time or whatever column date date time two date, date time one million seventeenth yeah fire. Big city living, folks. Big city living. And then let's say you wanted to get the, the following year. You, you, you could write another common table expression. And then you could, you could get all this stuff. 
And then, I mean, granted, this is just sort of a goofy example, but it, 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 gets, it gets to the mentality of people who use common table expressions for just everything because they have it in their goofy heads that they think that it's, just, it's going to make the query readable and understandable for everyone. Where you could just do something very simple like this and just cross apply some values to that year. And then you have that expression available to you in the select list and your query becomes a lot more compact and you don't need 17 different steps to express yourself or, or figure out or, 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 or write, write your logic out. You can do things very easily and more compactly when you use better forms of query writing. So this is literally everything you know, need to know about common table expressions. There is nothing magical or mystical about them. There is nothing fantastic about them. Perhaps someday materialization will come to SQL Server, but we don't have that now. Um, Fabric did just get Azure SQL database. Wow. Hold your applause. No, I, I mean it, hold, hold your applause. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Um, honestly, I hope you learned nothing because this is all very generic information about common table expressions, but it is all the information you need about common table expressions. All right, I will see you in the next video about the output clause, which will be literally everything you need to know about the output clause. All right, have a great day.